Welcome to the In Bulk Conclave video. Yes, this <laughs> is your Winds Lodge Prefect, Ombra, and my two house elves. And today, in, in honor of In Bulk, we are going to make an In Bulk recipe. It's called Returning Sun Spice Bread. And this recipe comes from the, the Gray School class, Wheel of the Year. It's the, uh, the class for Yule and in bulk. So this is one of the recipes given for in bulk. And my, uh, my two assistants here will behave, <laughs> first of all, behave. And they're going to help me. Uh, well, actually, they're going to be doing all the work. So <laughs> what do we sign up for? So in, in the, the one house elf over here, she has been taking an acting class to improve so what did you learn in your acting class today? About anger and happiness. Okay, so are you going to be demonstrating those both for us today? Do you yes. want me to? <laughs> because, okay, so in bulk, there, our theme for our conclave is spring cleaning and new beginnings. And uh, cleaning is, is definitely something that is associated with in bulk. Uh, usually my my uh, annual in bulk ritual is cleaning the... Uh, supplies closet at church during a Super Bowl Sunday but uh, and so you guys did a great job cleaning the kitchen um, yeah we're not gonna pan to look at the kitchen <laughs> yeah so and in new beginnings because you know we're at a time of the the year where the days start to get longer unless you're in the, the southern hemisphere in which case I um, okay the opposite is true so uh, <laughs> So let's let's get started. Um, the first step in this recipe says to sift the flour one and fourth cups flour soda. That's one half teaspoon baking soda and baking powder. Two teaspoons of baking powder into a non-metal bowl. Okay, we're gonna start. So now we don't have a sifter. So my baker, can you tell me the reason why we would sift normally? It would to make it more lighter and airy, and so there would be less clumps in it. So basically. is is it going to be the end of the world if we don't sift? No. Nah. No. Yeah, I usually don't. I saw on on Facebook, one of the Facebook memes. Um, is that how you're supposed to do that? No. You're but supposed to use like a, I think a spoon, and that's, that's a liquid. A liquid. That's it's a liquid measuring. Yeah, you're supposed to use. I know. Okay. Let's let's do it the right way. But Not we don't have one fourth cup. Well, I think you can. Add, we have. You know what we have? We have an eighth cup. Two eighths equals a fourth. Uh, no, 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 no. We're gonna use a spoon and we're gonna level. No, because we, we don't pack the flour. She's packing the flour. No, Hi. no. Start over. <laughs> <laughs> start over. Um, um. That's um. Okay, I don't recommend that you do that. <laughs> oh dear. Um, my hands have turned white. <laughs> okay, so we don't. Can my baker, can you tell me what happens if you pack the flour? Then you put too much flour and then the ratio's thrown off and then. Then, the what, then how, does the, um, how does the bread come out if you put too much flour in it? Not enough flavor and. So it's kind of hard as a rock, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so who do we know who likes to pack the flour? The fog. The father. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No. No. Where's this? Do you have a spoon? No. Um, well, uh, small I guess, enough. I guess you could. See, now when I was in 4-H, we would do this over wax paper. No, don't I do that. I wasn't packing it. No, was no, you don't stir it. We would do it over wax. No, don't touch the flour. We would do it over wax paper, and then we would level it off with a, a straight edge, which you could probably level it off over that liquid measuring cup. Um, do you have a straight edge? Can we just use like a finger or something? No, well, use. that's not really the most sanitary way of doing it. Is anybody going to be eating this? Um, well, yes, I think. I'm probably going to take, gonna I'm be gonna, gonna, like, take it. I'm going to, the people on the video are definitely not going to be eating this. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, why are you putting, <laughs> I don't even know why you're doing that right now. Oh, for the fourth of the? Yes. Okay. okay. So this is not this, this is not entirely what I, I had in mind for this. Um, that looks a little packed. I thought but, we were supposed to make this comical. Um, 
Uh, yeah, comical, but it still needs to, like, you know, work. <laughs> right. uh, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. I am I will only, I mean, I'm just going to give this to people at church. And What? No. So, well, no, no it's, it's at the, it's the other church that, that they, they'll never know. Okay. <laughs> no, so, somebody just. Okay, no, well, you know, no, what we're going to do, we're going to feed it to Daddy, because you know he, he will eat yeah. anything. Okay, all now, right. what's next? All right, all right, so we have the flour, the soda, the baking soda, one half teaspoon of baking soda. One. One half. One half. And, you know, what role does baking soda play? play in the recipe. Rising? No, I don't know. Yeah, no. What? What you... role? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. I don't. Either. I know. <laughs> I gotta be... But isn't the baking powder, isn't that like rising? Yeah, that's a thing. Baking yeah, powder. I, always, I, always, I, always, baking stuff. I always never knew the difference. So I was just like baking powder, baking soda. So, I don't know what each one does. So this bread, this is not a yeast bread. I think yeast breads are more like associated with the harvest holidays. So this is this is a, a quick bread. It's not that quick. It takes 15 there's minutes to flour cook. flying. There's the flour. Okay, okay, did you put in the um it says the two the two teaspoons of baking powder. No, it's not because you did not say <coughs> baking okay. powder. This is going to be definitely fed to the father. No, this will be fine. This will be great. We will see. Oh, well, the people that eat this don't see this video then. Well, just stop talking. As long as they have the right instructions, I mean, like, they can, they can figure it out. All right, so then it says add the mixed spice and ginger. Well, we didn't mix the spice yet. It says the mixed spices are equal parts cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice. So it says one teaspoon. So can you do the math? If it's one teaspoon and it takes equal parts, how much of each spice do you have to put in there? Third teaspoon? A third of a teaspoon. Do we have a third of a teaspoon? No, you're gonna have to estimate this. This is this is fine. It's it's okay. It's if it's a it's supposed to be a spice bread, so if it's a little on the spicy side, that would be okay. It says this bread can be made the night before and it improves with age. Improves with age? So you can um, keep it then, for years? Um, it probably needs a little bit more than a... I wouldn't put my fingers right in there. Well, you're the one who's the germaphobe and you're putting your fingers in the spices. I would actually put a little bit more in there, I think. How much? Which? No, no, no. Well, <laughs> Now you want me to No, use my no, I don't want you to use your <laughs> I know this is we should have thought this out better. Um, is there enough spices? Because I would put more in. I would totally put more in. I am putting more in! Because I don't know if that's a teaspoon or not. It's don't, I'm I mean, adding don't, more. Hey, don't we we have a wooden spoon. Get out a wooden spoon. Okay, there. Doesn't need to be precise. Okay, so in mac mix my spice and ginger. Half a teaspoon of ginger. Half a teaspoon of ginger. Okay. We have ginger. ginger. Get the ginger. Get the ginger. I'm getting the ginger. Go get it faster. Okay. Oh, uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the significance of these spices. Um, you know, every every spice, every plant has an, a magical association. I got these associations from um, this this list of significances from a site called uh, MagicalCat.com, and I went to to look that link up for you so that um, you know you could go and uh, show some love to that site. And as it turns out, the, the Magical Cat uh, MagicalCat.com has gone out of business. But if you go to that site. 
there are links to other pages for you know, your associations for your for your herbs and for stones. So the associations that I, I found um, for cinnamon is associated with money, prosperity, success. Um, you know all these things associated with with new beginnings. Um, nutmeg is uh, good for good luck, protection, allspice, also money, luck, treasure, health. Um, so the, the cinnamon also, I use cinnamon in like my, my mojo hands. It um, helps to heat up any spell, like to, you know, intensify, make it stronger, make it faster. And ground ginger is associated with adventure and new experiences. It's like I'm, I'm reading this and I'm not paying attention to you and I feel like I should be. Um, could you tell me the next ingredient? Okay, uh, it says next add the brown sugar and raisins. How much brown sugar? Brown first? sugar is a half a cup of light brown sugar. Hell, it's cold. So that's gonna be four of these. So, so that's the eighth a cup? Yeah, because um, we don't have a half a cup. I'm sure we do somewhere. We probably do, but it's probably in the dishwasher. Yeah, you can kind of hear that behind me. Oh, and so the raisins. I looked up raisins. They are associated, uh, well, actually the grapes. They're, they come from grapes. Uh, they're associated with fertility, money, and garden magic. So thank you, Magical Cat Herbal Grimoire. We're sorry you're out of business. You were a very great resource. And I really wish they were online for you to be able to, uh, to go check this out because they, they gave not just the uh, associations, but how you could, could use these. Next so. ingredient. Next ingredient. Did you put the raisins in? No. no. The yeah, raisins. You didn't say that. Uh, three quarters of a cup of raisins. We don't have raisins. We do have raisins. Okay. okay. Okay, so so we're back after locating raisins, and um, we weren't sure I had any. I was going to use, um, we had some candied crystallized ginger that I think was from my mom's house from when she got married, like in 1970. But I tasted it. it, it you know, I mean, it tasted pretty good, except for, you know, it tasted kind of like mushrooms, but other than that... I think they, it would have been good, but we did find we did find the, the raisins for the the fertility and the money and the garden magic. So you got that? Yep. You know this sugar. says you know this says Best Buy uh, July twenty fourth of two thousand fifteen, correct? No, I didn't know that. They look fresh to me. Call this fresh. We'll try one. Oh, you're the ones like putting your fingers in the spice jars and <laughs> I don't like raisins. I, like I don't even like fresh raisins. They'll be fine. Best Buy is in, like, you know, it's just like an it's an estimate. An estimate. And... Yeah, it really is. It really is. I've heard that somewhere. Yeah, but <laughs> somewhere. Uh... <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure it's very unlikely for them to be five years so old. So when you make this recipe at home, um, please use all fresh ingredients. Use more, more sanitary cooking practices. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it says mix. That it says make a well in the center of the flour mixture. Yeah. Wait, wait, did you just, wait, did you just read that if this is not a, like an easy recipe? It is an easy recipe. Okay, good. Oh, so you're going to make a... Do you know what that means? Yes, well, I mean, I know. All right, so then we're going to have to, like, stop the video for a little bit because it says, in a small saucepan, melt the butter and the syrup over low heat. And then we're going to pour the liquid into the well. So the butter, it is half a cup of margarine or butter and three quarters of a cup of Harrow Golden Corn Syrup, which we're actually going to use, we're going to use honey, which I looked up and you can substitute. I also have like dark corn syrup, so if we don't have enough honey. And um, one thing I found about the honey, the honey was kind of like not, um, 
you know, it was kind of hard in the bottom of the jar, but I ran it under hot water and I got it to loosen up. So, and honey never goes bad because I think they found honey like in the like the tombs in Egypt and it was still good because honey, there's like no expiration date on honey. That that's like true. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to come up with a, a reference for that, but that is true. Okay. Oh, and one other thing, one other magical. Uh, tidbit here for honey and caro syrup those are are used uh, in jar magic uh, which you can learn about in uh, one of our hoodoo classes it's in the, the third of the series you do have to take all three to get to learning about the jar magic because it is important to learn about the, the history and culture Dave what are you doing you really should have an appreciation for the history and culture of, of hoodoo all right, so right here we are melting the, uh, the butter and the honey, and we didn't have quite enough honey, so there's some, some corn syrup in there. So that's what's, that's what's happening here. All right, so here we're back. We have melted our, our butter and our honey and our corn syrup. And we poured it in the <laughs> well. And in the, in, uh, the break here, we, um, I added some more, some more spices there. So should be should be some generous amounts of ginger in there. You can never have too much ginger. All right, what's the next? It says add beaten egg and milk and mix well. Yeah, you want to smell it. No, don't. You're gonna get hair in it. Oh my god. This is <laughs> kind of do as they say, not uh, not as they do. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I don't recommend you try this. It. Um, did you get any eggshells in there? Nope. Okay. Do you have a honey and so so then we have the milk here, and of course the significance of the the milk is that imbolc comes the the word comes from the old English or old Irish rather. Um, um, that that wasn't good. <laughs> okay, so um yes, the, this is not going at all the way I planned. Um, so the word imbolc comes from the old Irish word that I do not know how to pronounce. It is spelled O-I-M-E-L-C and it means you milk. And for imbolc, we, I, instead of using cow's milk, we are using sheep's milk. <laughs> are we? It's, well, it's edible. Are we actually though? Yeah, yeah of course. I, mean, I don't think I'll be tasting this bread. I know if you guys were paying attention before, you would have seen me like pour the the milk like out of the the dairy milk, you know, the from the cow. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I'm joking. You have to you have to make it like holiday appropriate. So we're gonna pretend that it's actual you milk. Okay. And then after you said add add the beaten egg and the milk and mix very well. So like when it says mix, like do they need like like I mean like with a mixer? Um, you, just, you can just stir. Basically any way you can. But... Um, just try not to get any hair in it, please. But this is why, like if you work in a in a real kitchen, like a like a commercial kitchen, you would wear a hair net. Well, yeah. Are we in a commercial kitchen? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> do we have, do we even have hair All right. So, then pour into a well-greased two-pound loaf pan. We haven't done that yet. We haven't greased a loaf pan. All right, so we, we are back, and we are greasing the pan, and the way she's doing that is we have this, this um, canister of butter, and she's using a, a paper towel to use that to grease the, the inside of the pan. And this actually is the way I was taught to do this in 4-H, but usually used uh, like um, shortening instead of butter. But uh, you have butter. And then you're gonna sprinkle some flour in that. I would, you know, I really, I would prefer you use a spoon and not your fingers. Um, and now she's not done with that. Oh. That's not enough flour in there. <laughs> 
That's not usually how we did it. It's not really coating the sides. You don't want your bread to... Uh, you still with the fingers. Oh my gosh. Can you get her a, a spoon, please? What am I now, May? This is, this is a disgrace, is what this is. <laughs> Nothing happened. Um, I, this is like, I just, I feel like I should have had you guys do the video and no, no, no. oh my God. <laughs> um, all right. So did you add the poppy seeds? Yes. See now this, for some reason, poppy seeds is listed as ingredient and it doesn't, I'm not seeing it in the instructions. So it does call for a half a cup of poppy seeds, which is, um, associated with heightened awareness, luck, love, and in invisibility. And let me put out a, a plug. We have a, a class in the grade school um, about invisibility. And I took that class. It's it's very uh, it's very interesting. It's not literal in invisibility. It's more like making yourself inconspicuous and how to use the lighting um, to become an invisible. They actually, there is like a spell, like from a grimoire, that is in that the class for literal in, invisibility. And it, so, I mean, if, if you try it, like let me know how it goes. But no. Or just use poppy seeds. You see poppy seeds, and you'll be in you'll be in, invisible. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you think this is funny. This is this is not how. Oh my God. Why? Why? Okay, we got this. We why? got this. It's fine. It's fine. It's not. Fine. There's like literally no part of this video that has gone fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, serious. I, this is. But, you know, but you know, oddly enough, I do think I do think this bread is going to come out fine. Um, and we will like, kind of append at the end, like the finished pro product and, and how it tastes. And that'll give me time to, like, if it doesn't come out well, to go out to the store and, and buy one. <laughs> we'll pretend it did. Now, I'll be honest. I will let you know how this, this came out. And in, in spite of all the sanitary violations, um, um, I think we got it pretty, pretty accurate. And it goes, it goes into the oven. It's, we preheated the, the oven 320 degrees for 40 to 50 minutes. <laughs> oh man. So I, you know, and I will, at, at the end of this, when, um, when we see what the finished, finished uh, bread looks like, I will go over the instructions again, like, so that you, you get them, get them right when you make this your, yourselves and your own hopefully more sanitary conditions. Okay, are we ready to put that in the, the oven? Okay. Okay, so we have finished uh, uh, baking our, our bread, and this is what it looks like after being turned out of the pan. Now, full disclosure, before I turned this out, um, the, uh, on the other side, the, um, the bread sank a bit, so I, you know, because this is a school and this is for educational purposes, um, I did look online to see if, you know, I could troubleshoot, figure out why did it, it sink. And I, and I Googled, why did my, my cake sink? Because this is actually, you know, it's, it's a bread, but it's, it's more like a cake. It's got a lot of sweetener in it. Um, and it was a, a site called Lindy's Cakes in the, the UK suggested some things, um, Maybe it was over stirred and too much air got into it. And I think, um, you know, thinking back to the preparation on that, that could very well be the case. Um, also, if your, your oven is hotter than you think it is, um, if the oven too hot can be uh, a reason your cake sinks. And also, um, it said, uh, like opening the oven to check on your bread and, and, um, yeah, guilty as charged. I was checking on this, and it was doing great until, like, the last 10 minutes it, it sank. So, 
Um, I've already tried a little piece of this, a um, little piece that was like stuck in the uh, in the pan, and I will tell you, it it tastes amazing. So, yeah, the uh, you know the preparation was a little dicey, but I think we are quite happy with the the final cake. It is very tasty. I'm glad I added the extra spices, and I hope you'll try it. And um, Hopefully you have <laughs> uh, better uh, procedures and practices than my uh, my familiars had. So, but uh, good luck and happy in bulk and a very blessed bee.